All right, we're back where we were before Zippo goofed up and didn't put the, uh, <laughs> or didn't take the pulley off. Uh, engine is bolted down. I'm gonna throw the muffler on. Just slips right up underneath here. And we have our two heat shields. One heat shield will come up here and the other heat shield goes down below here. I won't do that until I get the cables hooked up. Cable routing is really simple. Just grab your throttle cable and your choke cable and run them accordingly. Run one to choke, run one to the throttle, and you're all set and ready to go. I believe that's your choke, and here's your throttle. So we'll get that done, uh, get the muffler on, we'll get it down on the ground, and then we'll go through the wiring, show you guys how I'm going to go from this junction block here to that style. So sit tight. Hey gang, before I tidy things up, um, I'll explain the wiring. Pretty simple. Uh, four wires here. The solenoid wire, which is the blue wire, actually uses this red wire to jump over to the battery. And then this loop here, this loop here comes over so it can go back up to the amp gauge. So one wire takes care of the solenoid. I don't know if you heard the clicking. One wire takes care of the solenoid. And that is, it ends up terminating um, right here, this red wire right here that goes in and meets up with the blue wire. And then like I said, that jumps over to the red but because that is looped right there it jumps back over to the orange and feeds the orange back into the wiring harness up to the amp meter so our ignition kill is yellow our solenoid uh, any backfire solenoid is red our stator power is red also our battery charge is red and our amp meter is orange so pretty easy pretty straightforward I'm gonna tidy that all back up and then we'll be ready to give this thing a test fire and see how she's running so hang on for that it is engine swap number four starting or excuse me number eight starting time so let's see what we get you ready i'm ready three two one stay with me corn tacked choke on half throttle oh. <laughs> i stopped just as it started I was gonna say I have to prime the carburetor, but it primed right as I. something what are we spitting fuel out of I'm guessing the uh, pump yeah we're spitting fuel out of the fuel pump so I have to correct that and it did not look like the battery was charging so we need to trace that as well and figure out what's going on there so let me do a little digging I'm gonna throw another fuel pump on and I'll tell you guys what I found as far as charging goes when I locate it. So hang on. Alright gang, I came out here at Gangbusters. Decided I was just going to figure the wiring 
or get the charging all squared away. Um, I don't remember if I pulled this out with uh, the tail end of the last video clip or not, but I pulled a good uh, stator, AC stator, and regulator rectifier out in anticipation of uh, needing to replace it. But I went through instead, well, before, I went through before, double checked everything here. And if you disconnect this wire, you can take your meter, both my meters are on the other side. Let's see if I can't convince one to come over here. There we go. Um, sorry. You take your meter, you set your meter to AC voltage, okay? AC volts and you disconnect this plug and then test both of those black wires. Of course, one cable on each. And you should get anywhere from 20 to 25 volts AC coming out of that. If you do, then you know the stator underneath the cover is good. Then you turn your attention to the regulator rectifier. It is two wires in, one wire out. Two AC wires in, one DC wire out. That single DC wire goes through the wiring system of the mower and eventually makes its way to the battery to keep the battery charged. Uh, it takes a couple different paths. It goes through the amp meter if it's equipped with an amp meter, so on and so forth. So uh, what I did was test it here and I had my voltage here that I needed on AC. So then I took my regulator rectifier. This is the one that was mounted and connected everything up and then I came over to this side where the single wire just comes through and connects to your wiring pigtail and I just took another set of these plugs the male and female and put them in line right here and then I found my 12 volt on the mower side which is the red wire found my 12 volts there just by grounding here and testing that wire of course I had one of these plugged in and I tested that wire but to abate any confusion um, you want to test with the key off to see if you have any voltage so you ground it here, and you've got your positive lead here. I'll physically show you. Let's see if I can't mount this camera over here so you guys can see a little better. There you go. Okay. I'm just grounded right to the engine, and then I just back probe on the red wire with the key off and I have zero voltage. Turn the key just to the on position, first set, first position, and check it again. You should then have your nominal battery voltage. Whatever your battery voltage is up there, you should be real close to it right here. When you get that done, you know that that wire is definitely going to the battery and it will, I mean, eventually go onto the battery through the wiring. And it will then charge your battery provided your regulator rectifier on the other side and your stator underneath your flywheel here are both in good repair. Well, the regulator rectifier turned out to be the problem. It had an open circuit inside, so that is a paperweight that needs to be thrown away. So I put in another regulator rectifier, turned the key to on, still have my 12 volts here, check, checking again here. I knew I already had my AC voltage. So then I started the engine and I put one meter, we have got two meters out. I put one meter in line right here using those. And I put it on the battery hot wire and then I put the other uh, test lead of the meter to the engine block with the meter set to DC volts. Then on the other side, I had the meter connected directly to the battery. So I was putting out right here, I'm putting out uh, about 13 point 
six volts here and because this battery is not very low on charge uh, the battery was almost 13 volts and I say almost it was like 12.8 volts I started the engine and watched this meter and I watched the meter that was connected to the battery just to see the difference and I'm losing eh, roughly half a volt which no big deal as the battery needs the charge that number increases and decreases that's what the regulator rectifier is for so charging system is fine on it it is all done as far as install goes I have the both belts connected um, I, if you guys remember I had to replace the fuel pump because the fuel pump was leaking out of the witness weep hole in the front of it so we replaced that uh, here's the bad regulator rectifier so it goes over there behind the trash can because I never make it in the trash can <laughs> and I don't feel so bad because neither does Adam Savage he always misses it too so now we're going to throw the hood back on take it I'm going to resituate these wires so that they're tucked in a little better. I'm supposed to be looking down here where I'm at. Um, and then we'll take it outside and give it a test tickle or a test run and see how it does. I do know that the deck needs leveled, so we'll do the deck leveling as uh, just in closing with it. And then it'll be ready to go back to uh, Charles's dad, or excuse me, Charles's son. So. Let's get it all buttoned up, get it outside, see what it does, possibly bring it back in, get that deck leveled, and more or less you're leveling with the wheels as well as with the hangers that the uh, lift rod is attached to, because if you see, it's just got a bunch of notches here from six to one that positions the deck height for you and sometimes these get out of whack one side will be higher than the other so we'll look at that and uh, we'll see what it's going to take to get that squared away so y'all stay tuned we'll pop the camera back on here in just a minute all right we're mounted ready to go
tell but this side over here is mowing lower than this side there's just two blades so the deck is cocked uh, so we'll take it in the shop and I'll show you guys how to level the deck out Okay, got the bubble level. Ignore this, but let's just go ahead and shut that off. We're looking at this bubble right here. How well you guys can see that bubble. See how the deck is favoring the other side being higher. None of the rollers are on the ground. And I'm going to show you guys the uh, where the adjustments are for these. And all you do is adjust them up or down depending on what you need. In this case, this side is going to go up. And I'll get a flashlight in there and I will point out what has to go up. We'll get our trusty old uh, crusty O light. Okay. There's a bolt and a nut right there that is where the adjustment is done because the rod is above it it just goes through this bracket and this bracket is what um, is attached to the lift arm that keeps everything balanced on the left side and the right side so I'm gonna turn that nut in until we are level here we'll go out and find a fresh patch of grass and see if it mows any better. Hang on. shade you can see it a lot better we are no longer cutting and scalping the grass on this side so just by turning one nut in to raise that low side of the deck using the level on the spot right there that actually says level that's how easy it is to level your deck and using the rollers if you don't want the deck to further have the potential to sca uh, scalp you can raise and lower those so that they will hit a lowest spot and where those adjusting bolts are it's a slip fit so the deck can ride up onto those bolts that are attached to your lift rod so there we go, the old Bob Vila Craftsman Signature Series is alive again. Time to call Charles, get him over here and get this one out of here and get the next project in. Appreciate each and every one of you, my voice cracked, I must be going through puberty. Appreciate each and every one of you. Um, if you haven't already, consider subscribing for me. Um, then you have the option to be notified all the time, but of course YouTube, YouTube's algorithms are broke. They don't send me notifications, so I'm sure they're not sending you, but if you're one of the lucky ones and you're getting notifications and you want to see a video when I post, just hit that subscribe button and uh, tickle the bell. Promise you. See you when I see you.